Sawyer, how long have you and Brendan Russell hated each other's guts? <laughs> so, do you have anything you'd like to say to Sawyer Bean uh, <laughs> while you're being recorded? Hmm. I get chirped all the time, and I gotta back it up, and I gotta chirp back, and it, it like coming in here like I. I think Gus sent something to our group chat about how some like kid like wrote a freaking essay in the MLW discord about how what I did like was taunting and it was wrong or something yeah. like that. And he was like, screw Sawyer, screw the Cobras, da, 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 this. I was like, oh, this is freaking awesome, man. Like, sure, sure. Was Sawyer being like, it's fine to talk and like, you know, play your game. And that's fine. Like everyone, everyone talks to an extent, but it was just, you know, Year one, I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk as much as he does for being a rookie in the league. I mean, Nothing against um, Jackson or uh, anybody else with the Wildcats. Um, very personally, I'm very hopeful you guys play again. I mean, it's just it. It's so great from an entertainment standpoint to have that like that villain presence of the Cobras, and and then to have you guys. It's kind of like you get that. It's almost like the good guys versus bad guys type thing, and you know. What? Everyone loves the heroes, but the villains have more fun. So, hey, welcome back to Fade the Mahoney. Uh, please stick around. This one's going to be, uh, we're going to jump around just a little bit. Uh, Chris Cheatham's going to be joining me in a little bit, and then we'll uh, finish it off with some NFL betting, including Georgie's literally white hot lock of the week. Doesn't make any sense. The guy has no idea what he's doing, and he's like four and one or five yeah four and one i think anyway um all right to start off the show this is fade the mahoney i'm mike over here is trevor our show here we like to talk about sports betting uh, we do it differently than other people a lot of places will give you picks or charge you for picks on sporting events and tell you to go bet on them we do it differently we give picks and we tell you to bet against them that's what fade the mahoney means we're bad sports bettors that's what a Mahoney is. You want to fade us. You don't want to follow us. You want to fade us. So when we talk MLW, Trevor and I are the only people that I know of on the planet who actually bet on these series. Trevor sets the line. I bet it. The way it works, <clears throat> one team is almost always better than the other team. They're going to be favored. And, and when you bet on baseball in a money line situation, Trevor will say they are minus 125 favorite, as an example. 125 means you have to wager $125 to win 100. The other way around is if you think the underdog's going to win, you bet 100 and you can win 125. That's the very short way to explain it. We usually do over under uh, run totals on a series. Trevor will say 17 and a half runs. And I will bet whether there will be more or less. We're not doing that in the playoffs simply because we don't know if there's two or three games played. Trevor, was there anything I missed in that explainer? I think you got it all. I think that was a really comprehensive and well done explanation. Thank you. Uh, lastly, we say this a lot. We should say it every episode. We don't know. We don't have any idea what happens in these series. Trevor and I, we do not watch when they, when they do the Instagram live of the first game. We don't watch it. We are friends with a lot of the players in the league. We never ask for spoilers. They never tell us anything. We got nothing. All of this is done like this game is being, these games are being played on Friday afternoon in our YouTube boxes. So that's how we approach it. Boom. Good. Well done. All right. Trevor. You're the man in charge of setting these. Let me take one step back. We bet on the series normally. We used to bet on totals, and we always do the ladder bet. The ladder bet, thanks to Joe at MLW Stats on Instagram, he does fantasy uh, baseball for each series. Trevor and I each select one player from the series, and whoever does better on the ladder wins 100 bucks. Trevor won week one. He beat me by 66 points. I won week two. I beat him by like 40 something. Now we're on to week three. We are in the championship series. This is American League, right? I got that right? That is correct. All right. Cobras, Predators. You couldn't if you, you couldn't. It's the best series you could get. It's the best I, one. 
Absolutely. I mean, I can't tell you how excited I am for this series. I know my son Andrew is very excited as well. I assume the hardcore MLW watchers are also very excited for this series. You know, when they played in the regular season, the the Cobras swept them, right? I'm not forgetting that, right? That's exactly what happened. Yes, Trevor, you're right. The yes. uh, Cobras swept the Predators. In- yeah. It was Behan's like coming out party. And, you know, so when I was making the line, my first thought was we saw in the two playoff series that have played so far that when you have a dominant player, the best player in the series, and, you know, they're going to perform in prime time like they did with Ryan against the Wildcats and Jimmy against the Eagles. Yep. It's hard to not make them the favorite in a three game series. The Cobras have been a great team all year long. Bian has been amazing. Barron has been amazing. Both great pitchers. Drew, obviously, a great hitter. Sean chips in. Sean and Andy chip in when they can. The Preds are a favorite in the series, despite being swept in the regular season, despite having a worse record, despite being the three C in the AL, and despite being 3,500 minus 3,500 at the start of the season to win. Plus 3,500. Sorry, plus 3,500. Oh, betting. Futures bets, for those of you who want to know, we did a preseason betting extravaganza in which Trevor uh, put the odds for every team to win the championship, and the Predators were the longest shot. Is that correct? Longest shot? That is correct. Okay. So it comes down to the fact that you have to beat what is currently the most dominant pitcher in the league who has only gotten better throughout the season. And that's the biggest thing is not only was he dominant early in the season, he he's debuted other pitches throughout the season mm-hmm. that have made him even more dominant. And so I think the way that Ryan thinks about things and the way that he pitches, it's very likely that he wasn't showing the Cobras everything that he had in that first series against mm-hmm. them in the regular season. And I think they're going to have a lot different approach. And so for that reason, I need to make them the favorite. And I'm going to put them at minus 140. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> My numbers have been pretty sharp. I mean, I had the Diamondbacks 5 and 10, facing the Eagles 10 and 5 as favorites also. I think it's just, you know, a three-game If this were a five-game series, I would have the Cobras as favorites, simply because they have what I think to be the deeper pitching staff um, and in a five game series, you can't just throw Ryan five games. You know, you'd have to put McGlade in there for a couple of games, I think. Um, so I think, I think the Cobras are going to be in that same situation that the Eagles were in last, you know, in, in the last series where, you know, Dallas pitched the first game and then he went out there for the second game. And Dan said, he thinks he made a mistake doing that. And, you know, what is the Cobras approach here? Does Barron start? Does Sawyer start? And then how do they go from there? You know, if they lose the first game, they switch the pitcher. If they win the first game, do they switch the pitcher? These are a lot of different questions they have to answer. Whereas I think the Preds are just going to roll with Ryan and, and he's going to be their guy, you know, for all, all three, three games. Wow. Uh, you really rattled me there. Um, uh, I'm obviously taking the Cobras. Uh, I'm going to take all that plus money on our hundred dollar wager. So again, betting wise, I'm laying $100 to win 140 opposite for Trevor. For those of you who watched the before the playoffs started, we did a draft of all the teams. I had the number one pick and I took the Cobras. So obviously I have to take them here. Um, I'm just, you shook me a little bit. I can't believe it's that big. I, your points were very well made. Uh, I didn't really think about the, um, going next level and Ryan maybe was holding some stuff back. Uh, But uh, the Cobra scored quite a few runs uh, in that series and uh, uh, nobody has really been able to uh, tee off on Sawyer so far. So. It's true. I I just think it's going to come down to some timely hitting also. And I think that Ryan, Alec and Brennan have that experience and you know, the, co- the Cobras, they don't have, you know, aside from Drew, um, you know, with Sawyer and Barron, they don't have MLW playoff, like real hardcore game experience 
where it's going to be, you know, a big game like this, you know, and, you know, you saw with Sawyer, he likes to talk a little trash and he, he did back it up then, but this is a different stage. You no, know? this is a big, this is big time. If he can back it up here in, in the playoffs, then in his first season, then, you know, you got the, I'm just, I'm just rolling with Ryan in this situation. I think they have the experience. They've been here before and they uh, have been rolling. And, you know, I think there's something to be said for that playing in that series against the Wildcats, that momentum carrying forward into this next series. I think you see it, you know, you see it in the major leagues right now with what the Phillies have done, um, you know, not, not a great regular season, but then coming through huge uh, as they get hot at the right time. And I feel like the Preds, this Preds team is just in such a good place right now. And obviously the Cobras, their, their last series was that series in, um, in Vermont. Uh, they didn't have Drew there. Okay. Yep. So, you know, they might come out a little flat, you know, if the Preds, the Preds win game one, it's going to be hard for them to lose two straight with, with the mental things going on in the Cobras clubhouse. And, you know, I love the Cobras. I'm going to be internally, I'll probably be rooting for the Cobras, even though financially it's not a good situation for me, mm-hmm. um, both because of our bets and also because if anybody has any of those future tickets for the 3,500 plus 3,500 on the Preds, it's a little tro- troublesome. All right. All right. Well, let's, let's wrap up the gambling. Um, uh, I just, I, I love the predators. I love all these guys. We got Warda, we got Cratch, we've got Russell. They've all been on the show. That's why I have their jerseys. I just think there's a really good chance that only one of them hits the ball in the series. So, all right, uh, let's do the ladder. Uh, I went first last week. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot of suspense in who you're going to take, but go ahead. Yeah, I will take Ryan Cratch. Okay, I'll take uh, I'll take the likable kid Sawyer, the new face of the league, Sawyer being Ryan Cratch, who's been my favorite player since day one of this podcast. Obviously, obviously, glowing. Gl- editing department drop that thing in right here where uh ryan finds out he was the eighth or ninth person in the uh cy young listings preseason oh. all right should we move on to the cy young numbers <laughs> just yeah sure why not yeah might as well get it all in. this this one isn't isn't as nearly as insulting as the other one he listed 11 okay. he listed 11 players and you were seven behind Norp Schultz. There's eight teams in the league, and I was listening. To this, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh wait, sorry. <laughs> you, can, you can crawl on that one. Yeah. Um. Uh. Real quick. Uh. We do. We do NFL betting here as well. Me, Trevor, and our friend Edonk. Every week, uh, we release our lock of the week. Uh, we bet a hundred bucks on each one of those. As you can see from the results right here, Edonk is leading. Uh the charge uh, with a three, three and one record. Um, I'm two and five. You're three and four. What do you got this week? Lions. Lions. What are they? Plus three or plus three and a half. Give me the three and a half. Okay. Miami. Is that who they're playing? They are. There's no analysis needed here. It's it's what I do. It's home, It's home team. That's a dog in the dome. They're not a good team. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be shocked when you hear Jordy's pick this week. It's really going to blow your mind. I assume it's a, a road favorite. Double, it sure, double it sure, road favorite. It sure is. It sure is. That's how he pays the bill. It's the road favorites in the NFL. All right. Uh, that's our section right here. You got anything else you want to say? Are we good? Did we nope. anything? All right. Uh, we're back as promised with uh, Chris Cheatham. MLW superstar and former World Series champion, right? Those things are accurate. Yep, far in the past, but they yeah. are accurate. And there's always next year. All right, uh, Trevor there and is. I. Trevor and I did our mini preview with the betting. Um, you're not aware, Chris, but Trevor on the betting line, he made the Preds minus 140 favorites, which. Okay. I found startling. Obviously, I bet the Cobras. So uh, we're not doing predictions. Uh, we're just going to do so, a little bit of analysis. So a couple of questions. You go with it however you want, however, uh, how much detail and in-depth you want to get. But my main question is, if you were in charge of the Cobras, if you were Drew Davis, 
who's on the bump starting game one? Who? Yeah, I mean, you're you're starting with a tough question for sure. I mean, Sawyer was very very good against the Preds in the regular season. There's absolutely no taking that away from him. Uh, but I, in my opinion, I'm starting off with Barron. I mean, you have to. In my opinion, I think he's just so dynamic. I think he's he's one of, if not the best pitcher in the league. That's that's where I lean. I it's very tough. I I think you can definitely go either way with both guys, the way they're both playing. They're both playing with a lot of confidence right now, them as a team. This is why they're playing so good is because they have a lot of confidence and swagger and they got all that back this year. So I think I'm going to ride with Baron. I I, I think that Sawyer stuff plays a little bit better off of Baron versus the other way around. I think I'd rather start with my ace. And then if need be come in with the, the, you know, the wild card rookie, a guy that doesn't have as much experience on the mound. I think I'm going to roll with Baron. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um, uh, those of you who have already watched, you know, that on the ladder uh, draft that uh, Trevor and I just did, uh, ooh, I don't have Cratch's jersey up anymore. I put yours up. Um, uh, Trevor took uh, Ryan Cratch. I took uh, Sawyer. I just assume if it goes three games, I just kind of think Sawyer will pitch at least two of them. I actually kind of think he's going to start, but I don't know much yeah. about, I don't know much about much. So uh, you're probably right. Okay. What about uh, any other things that you think are key factors to the series? Um, and again, if you have any thoughts on that ridiculous line that uh, Trevor made with the Preds uh, being being favored and pretty heavy favorites yeah uh i think that's weird honestly i think that that's incorrect for how this line should be i think both these teams do match up well but the cobras already got the best of them once uh you know i I get that the preds are coming off an absolutely dominant performance against wildcats where ryan cratch went absolutely hamburger and that was probably one of the more impressive showings that we've had in general Uh, i mean i I can't really sing enough praise on that, but I mean, this is, this Cobras team is rested. They got the buy less chances to choke. I mean, I think the line is, it, it's, it's definitely going to be close. I mean, it's a playoff series. They're all going to be very close, right. but I think if I was going into this series, I have, and I'm not making a prediction of who wins, but I think I would have the Cobras favored going in based off the regular season matchup and the fact that they got the buy. I think, I think all those things pl- play a part here, but I could see it from both ways because the Preds are coming in so scorching hot and they have the best player on either side of the other field too. And, and that's definitely something that can't be taken for granted. Yeah, that was uh, Trevor's, that was Trevor's biggest point. Best player in the Understandable. series. Best player in the series, at least for the first two has uh, ended up winning with uh, Ryan and uh, Jimmy in the first two. Right. Um, anything Anything else you want to talk about in terms of key matchups or strategies or anything that you think should play a big part? Well, yeah, I think uh, a, a couple things for sure. I mean, I mean, we're pretty much, I mean, the Preds are going to keep it short and sweet with the big three. I, I like that they, they kind of all chipped in a little bit during, I know it was Ryan that led the charge, but you saw impact from pretty much everybody, at least to some extent, that's what the Preds need to win. And that's why they need to be dominant. I mean, that's what they used against us in the regular season. To, uh, and I thought I played really good in that series. It didn't really matter because there was no holes in their in their three man lineup. So I think if they play kind of how they did against the Wildcats, I think, that's the recipe to win against this Cobras team. And for the Cobras, I think they got to figure out a three man lineup of their five guys. I don't really care who it is. Maybe, maybe for game one, you go with four, but I, I'm always an advocate of shortening that bench, especially in the playoffs. You want to get your three best hitters to get the most looks possible on a given day to have the best because it's all it takes is one swing. And you don't want, if you got someone that's just at, like, if you have a Sawyer, you know, go absolutely crazy again in this series and he's batting once every four or five hitters that's just inexcusable in my opinion so I think you gotta you know you can bring in a pinch hitter you can do those kind of pinch runner for those situations that's I and I like the fact that they have five guys but I think for a series of this magnitude when they have a chance to get back to the world series I think you gotta roll with three-man lineup of some sort I don't know what that best lineup is but that's for Drew to figure out he knows this team better than I do. Yeah. Uh, it was going back over some of our, uh, past episodes, uh, specifically in regards to the Eagles. 
and Trevor and I on three or four occasions specifically talked about the five man lineup. And we, we basically said it was going to be their undoing. It was partially their undoing. Uh, I guess if we're, if we're talking about the Cobras, Drew and Sawyer definitely have to bat. Yes. Uh, so the third is when we know, uh, Drew doesn't trust the Red Baron to bat. So we know it's either Flynn or uh, Andy, Andy, right? So I guess it's and, whoever he feels better about right. if it's a three-man line. Right. And normally I'm going to lean ten, almost 10 times out of 10. I'm going to lean with Sean in, in any given situation. But that crutch screw ball is going – I mean, Sean's not going to be able to hit that, and Ryan knows it. So I think – if Ryan's attacking, maybe, maybe you start with Sean, you see how Ryan kind of approaches him. And if he's really struggling to see that screwball, which, or two seam fastball, however you want to word it, which I expect him to, then you bring in Andy, but he's just such a wild card and he can be one series. He can be a free out. The other series, he can be a, a force on the base pass and supply some power. So it really depends on, what side of the bed he wakes up on or, you know, if Sean is getting pitched a little differently than I expect, which that's how I would pitch Sean. If I was, if I had crashed Arsenal, I would just pepper the screwball, make him hit it. And he probably won't, but so yeah, it's, it's definitely a tough situation. I don't envy Drew's position to, to, you know, tell somebody to sit, but I think you have to roll with three guys and, you know, go from there. All right. Well, we'll see. Uh, last time we saw Andy, um, uh, Mr. Clutch, right? I think he went yard off of yes. uh, Jimmy North in Vermont. Uh, let's let's do some real quick uh, NFL uh, picking uh, to supplement. Uh, Trevor's already made uh, his. Uh, Edonk and I and Georgie will be back a- after this to do our picks. But uh, your last time around, your lock of the week, uh, you went on and on about how. Um, the Broncos were going to win by multiple touchdowns <laughs> against the Colts and they lost outright. So we have big hopes for you. What are you thinking this time around? Yeah. So first I, I'd like to shout out my good friend, Jory. Uh, I mean, he's been money with these picks and, and honestly, if I had been on the show for that giants Jags pick, I was, I was right in lockstep with him. We both agree. I mean, it was a very popular pick on the public and usually I'm not like, someone that goes crazy over those, you know, really public dogs, even when I thought it was the better team. I just didn't see a world where the giants lost this game. Uh, and he didn't either. He, he led the charge. I was riding shotgun. And, and so that was pretty sweet by him, but he's been very good on these picks and he's gotten some criticism for you guys for those picks as well, which I think is unfair given that he is a, apparently a professional capper. It does and, appear that it does appear that uh, it appears like he <laughs> should start making people or he should start charging people money for yeah. these picks. This has been, I mean, if you, fa- if you're fading Jorgie right now, you're doing something wrong as a gambler and yeah. this man's riding a, riding an absolute hot streak. So I'm going to be asking him for plenty of picks, plenty of gambling advice this weekend. Cause he seems to have a really good read of, of the slate. And speaking of the slate, I, uh, I actually really like this slate. I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of interesting lines, a lot of big spreads, and a couple that I think teams are going to cover. I mean, I'll, I'll shout out. It's basically the same exact situation. This isn't going to be my pick, but the Giants game against Seahawks, literally same situation as last week. Going into Seattle, I think Seattle is a little bit better than the Jags, but I think the Giants can roll in there and and cover that spread. It's it's uh, plus three for them, so I think that's a good pick. But that's not the one I'm going to go with. I always give a couple, you know, honorable mentions. Right. I also think that it's a little bit fuzzy now because they just trade away Robert Quinn but I think the Bears can cover that line against the Cowboys I like what Justin Fields has been doing I like what they've done as a team and I think their defense is playing well so I think that's a big spread as well the Cowboys were and then and the Lions are very close uh before Jared Goff absolutely pooped his pants so <laughs> I think I think I could see a similar recipe for the Bears and as long as Fields doesn't turn it over 16 times I think they'll be all right but my actual pick I apologize for the couple honorable mentions is actually the primetime game on Sunday night. Uh, You know, I think a lot of people think that the Packers are done toast. You know, they're going in, they're going into Buffalo trying to fix this season. And, and if this game was in Lambeau, I think I might pick the Packers upright to win, 
Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know. I think, I think anytime you're getting, a, giving Aaron Rodgers 11 points, it's too many. I mean, he's still a great quarterback. I think even with the injuries they have on offense, uh, Lazard a little banged up, Randall Cobb a little banged up, Christian Watson banged up. I think they can keep this game close. You know, the Bills are coming off a bye. I think they could underestimate the Packers at home. I mean, the Bills are a great team, and they're my actual – I have a $200 outstanding bet on the Bills to win the Super Bowl. So, it's not me saying that they're not a good – or not an elite football team because they are. I just think that the Packers are bound to figure this out. And and while I don't think they're going to win the game on the road, I think the Packers can cover it, and I think Rodgers is going to have a better game this week. All right. So, I'm going to recap this because you, you really shocked me here. Um, you're bad at this is my experience with you and <laughs> usually usually the younger guys such as yourself you like to lay points but you've given me three picks and three underdogs yep so i have a little bit of hope for you in the future honorable mention bonus picks you like the giants plus three and the bears plus nine and a half Correct. but your, your lock of the week is the packers plus 11 yeah i just think that um Again, it's a really good slate, so that's why I want to give out a couple of honorable mentions. I, I mean, there's there's a lot of different really interesting games, but uh, I think I just again think that the Packers can can uh, can play a lot better than they have been. And even for as bad as they played last week, they only lost by two points on the road against the Commanders. I mean, a much worse team, but I they played about as bad as you could and still only lost by two. Yep. All right, um, that's what I wanted out of you, Chris. That was good stuff again with the uh, insight. Um, I don't know what happened to your uh, video, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, I'll, I'll figure out the editing department. I'll figure out some way to give people to something better to look at than me. Um, all right. Uh, you need to stick around to watch, uh, you passed your point to get, uh, Georgie's pick unless you already know it, but of course he's, he's laying points with the road favorite again. Cause that's, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, best. we are back once again with the ride, the Georgie segment. Yeah. You heard me right. Not fade the Georgie. Ride the jury because I get another win. Four and one now. The guys keep calling my picks bad. They keep betting against my picks. And I'm still winning. I'm four and one. So I got I got another pick this week. And if you're, if you're not riding with me, then you're probably going to lose. And, you know, I think that's what the guys learned this week once again. So this week, let's go another road team. Another road favorite. Tennessee minus one and a half against the Colts. Oh, hey, Jorgie, I don't know if Tannehill's playing or not. I, I don't really care. Tannehill, Malik Willis, doesn't matter. Texans are not a good team. The Titans are going to run the ball. I just saw what Josh Jacobs did against them. He's playing against them in fantasy, so that really hurt. Derrick Henry can do the same thing. Tennessee is just uh, going to continue to manhandle that division until one of those teams gets a better quarterback. So ride me again, 5-1 next week. Lock it in. All right. All right. That's going to do it uh, for this portion. Everybody stick around. I'll be back with uh, the E-Donk in just a minute. And Chris, I trust you're still there. I can't see you. I am. Yep. (laughs) I I appreciate uh, you working a long day of work and uh, stopping by and helping us preview uh, what is the most anticipated season or the most anticipated rematch of the season. So we're pumped for that. So, uh, Mr. Cheatham, thanks for stopping by, buddy. Appreciate it, Mike. Thank you. Okay. See ya. Hey. Uh, welcome back. Uh, got the E-Donk here to uh, finish off the show. Uh, we already say, stated it already, but just to recap, E-Donk is currently the leader of uh, the picking crew here at 3-3-1. Three, three, and one. Uh, Only non-loser. Congratulations. Uh, you, last week, you had the Raiders, who I think were losing in the fourth quarter or end of the third quarter, but it didn't matter. They won by a million. Uh, I had a truly awful pick in the Patriots. Uh, so I lost that one by like 30 points or something like that. I'm two and five. I'm really bad. And Trevor had whoever he had, he's down to three and four. So, uh, uh, we're bad, but again, Lucas is the worst, but no, 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 we're not bad. You guys are fucking terrible. Uh, well, I mean, you still, we're all losing money, all of us, because there's a thing called juice. Going three, three, and one, you're not, you're losing money. Oh no, we don't. I don't pay juice. <laughs> all right, Edonk, let's start with you. Uh, you missed uh, just to give you a heads up. Uh, Lions is who uh, Trevor has. 
Yeah, oh, so. fuck. Really? Yeah. That's, just that's who I had, too. Oh. <laughs> well. Hold on, let me. Hold on. I have a. Uh, you, you, ever, you ever get one of these? You ever get one of these? In <laughs> you, you're, that's a cheat sheet. You can't use that. All right, I'll go, uh, since I'm, I've got the uh, worst uh, record of the season, while you study, I'll do mine. Uh, I'm laying the four points at the Falcons. Uh, they're, they're playing the Panthers. The Panthers won their Super Bowl uh, last week. They might not even show up. So uh, uh, Falcons for me. Um, if you need to study, can you drop the Lucas lock of the week uh, while you study? Who... Uh, by the way, everybody, fade the Mahoney, one in six. Lucas Lock of the Week, one in six. It's almost impossible to do that, but that's how bad he is. What do you got? Um, Lu Lucas is um, – uh, fuck, I wrote it down. Who, who's playing the Steelers this week? Who's playing the steel? Oh, the Eagles, obviously. The Eagles are yeah, laying he likes, 10 and a half he likes, points. Yeah, the Eagles. He's taking the Eagles. <laughs> laying 10 and a half points. Yeah. Wow. wow. Shocker, never, huh? Never saw that one coming. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so the other game that I liked was uh, the Vikings at home. I think they're laying three and a half. Yep, three and a half against the Cardinals. Man, I think it's fuck. Like you should probably, um, if you own an automobile, just sell that thing, and then take the money and put it, uh, put it on the uh, Miami Dolphins this weekend. The Dolphins? Oh, because both you and Trevor. Yeah. Are the Lions. That's mm -hmm. that's good thinking. All right, that was a lot of NFL. We I'm actually, I have to make a note for myself. Hold on, back to Dolphins. <laughs> Don't forget. All right, uh, we're going to, we got to keep this short. The whole thing's gone long. The E-Donk does, in fact, have a dad joke of the week for us. It's pretty good. I have no. two of them. Okay, we'll just um, save one for next week. Let's just do one. No, I have to have both of them. So, um, how? How do you, uh, or sorry, uh, how does a cat like its steak? I don't know. Rare. <laughs> how are you going to do better than that one? You sure you don't want to go out on top? Well, it's pretty good. Um, who is, uh, who is Cardi B's healthier sister? Cardio, obviously. Cardio. Yeah, not as good. Not as good. Not as good. Not as good as the other one. All right. Where? That, that one. That one. That's Mount Rushmore right there. Uh, say goodbye to the people and good gambling. All right. Go bet the Dolphins for a billion. Yep. See you, everybody.